So the Panthers fired Matt Rule a, a couple of days ago, and it, it it reminded me a lot of a situation in Cleveland in, in 2018. And the situation I'm referring to is Baker Mayfield's rookie year. Ironically enough, Baker Mayfield's been through two of these situations in his career. Um, but ironically enough, um, this was when Hugh Jackson was the coach. And he had just got off that 1-31 in stretch. But for whatever reason, even though we kind of knew that the Browns wanted to move into a new era, um, I think the offseason prior to that, they had just hired uh, John Dorsey. And I think the Panthers just recently hired a new general manager um, within like the last year or so. Wh- whoever is the general manager was not the general manager or not the the people in in charge when, the, when uh, Matt Rule took the job. So you end up in a situation where... Matt Rule is a complete lame duck. I know it. You knew it. Everybody who has a passing glance of football knew it. Anybody who cares about the Carolina Panthers knew it. But for whatever reason, they talk themselves into, let's just give them a chance for this third year. And this is where I'm going to advocate for something that is not necessarily a popular thing to advocate for, right? Because when you don't have a good franchise and you're consistently compared to Pittsburgh or Baltimore, I understand as a Brown fan, I get the stigma you deal with when you have to continuously fire head coaches um, as an organization. It does not feel good, but oftentimes it's the right thing to do. If it's been two years, and a coach has not showed you any signs of being a great coach, whether that is from a schematic standpoint or whether that is from some kind of uh, motivational standpoint, right? Like you can be a great head coach in many different ways. But if you have not demonstrated that in two years, why waste time with the third year, Right. And that's what I think the problem is in Carolina. How did Matt Rule get to this third year? And not just get to the third year. I mean, traded for a quarterback. You did all these things to, 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 to give Matt Rule the best chance possible to succeed when you knew he was never going to succeed. And not because, not because you set him up for failure or anything. Because you knew what he's been the last two years. And if you work in the Carolina Panthers organization, this is even more inexcusable that you let him continue to be the coach. Because this offseason, you hired two former head coaches to be the coordinator. That only happens when you know you're about to fire somebody. Right? Steve Wilkes got hired. Um, What's his name? Ben McAdoo. I believe he got hired too. Was that last year or the year before? Either way, Steve Wilkes just got hired. He's now the interim head head coach. He just got hired this offseason, right? So you hired somebody who you're familiar with, used to work in your organization. In 2012, he was a DB coach, and he became like assistant head coach and D coordinator during the Cam Newton years. This is somebody who is familiar, who who you knew, hey, if we got to fire him, we can go to him. But the real answer to the question of if we fire him we can go to this guy if you have to fire somebody well if you have to have somebody hired on staff in case you fire your coach you might as well fire your coach is my point right if your coach is so questionable that you're sitting here wondering hey who can i hire to be a coordinator to take over in case i have to fire him in middle of the year you should have just fired him already I don't understand. I mean, I do understand why teams do it, right? The Browns did this for years because it becomes a reputation thing, right? You don't want to be known as a team that always fires their head coach. But if a dude's not good at his job, 
we not we nobody should keep their job just because everybody is afraid of how it looks if they keep firing people who aren't good at their job. And everybody saw that you know he was not good. Matt Rule was not good at his job. This is no surprise to anybody. I mean, the whole Baker Mayf I think this is actually a good thing for Baker in the long run because boy, if this were going bad for Baker and Matt Rule at the same time and both of those people dudes were like um at the end of their rope about to be out the league you know what i mean type pressure during this year that thing would have exploded in a way that is spectacular those are two egos that cannot coexist in panic um so at least it's just baker mayfield um steve wilkes takes over now and the carolina panthers are in a worse position than where they started at the beginning of the year you should have probably just fired matt rule I don't understand why you would hire somebody to maybe take over if you fire him. If you wanted to fire Matt Rule, you should have just did it. And you didn't save any money. You still got to pay his contract. Like, honestly, Carolina Panther fans, if you're in the chat and you're defending uh, um, them hire, keeping Matt Rule to this third year, let me know what you think. Like, what what would be the defense of doing this. Like what did you gain out of having Matt Rule coach these first five games? What did you gain from having Matt Rule coach the entire training camp? Like even if you just wanted to hire Steve Wilkes, right? If that's just the move you wanted to make all along and you just waited to do it, what did you gain from not having Steve Wilkes be the head coach for these five weeks? What did you gain? Did you gain anything? I don't think so. You just wasted a bunch of time. Um, and this is kind of what happens. Now, again, this isn't the end of the world. The Browns fired a coach within one year, Freddie Kitchens. They got the coach of the year next year in Kevin Stefanski. You know, sometimes you got to move off of what's wrong to get to what's right. It's happened plenty of times. Doesn't mean it can't happen for you. But you did waste some time is my point. Um, but, yeah, Matt Rule fired. It was inevitable. I think everybody saw this coming two years ago. It, they definitely saw it coming this offseason. Um, it's just one of those weird situations where everybody knows this dude is going to get fired. So why did you even bring him back? That's my point. Let me know what y'all think.